This is the Jet 1836 drum sander. I've had it now for four years, and it did replace my old Performax 25 times two. The Performax was a much bigger machine. It had two drums, this only has one drum. It did take up a lot more space though, and with a small shop like this, every little bit of space counts. So as you can see, I did modify this a little bit by adding cabinets to the stand. It turned out that that was too much weight for the stand to handle, and the legs started to bend, and I had to take the casters off, and right now I just have a homemade dolly under the bottom cabinet. It's been this way now for more than a year, and it's fine. The cabinet, or the sander, is still mobile, and the only thing I did was just take the, uh, the legs off. I know a few people will think like, well, it's a good thing to hit your foot on or your ankle, but thankfully that hasn't happened yet, but it does seem a little, a little bit dangerous. But again, talking about a small shop, I'm always trying to take advantage of any little bit of space for storage. So for the most part, I like this machine. There's really only one thing, and I'll get into that in a minute. Let's talk about the thing that I don't like right away, and that is that the belt here always tracks to the left. No matter what I do, no matter how I adjust it, within a couple of uses, it's moved over to the left and it starts to hit the bottom of the machine. You'll see there's some kind of white powder on the belt here, and that's because it's taking away the paint underneath. So I've tried adjusting it uh, just a bunch of different times without any luck. So if you know anything, please leave it in the comments. Other than that, the machine works really good. I mean, this is a small shop. I'm not a production shop. I'm making a few pieces of furniture a year. So if you have, a, you know, if you're kind of a, a weekend woodworker, I think that this will do good for you. The price on this machine is just about $1,750, $1,800. Uh, it is just one, I'm gonna take this off here. It is just uh, one drum and it's a, 18 inch by 36, so if you're going to sand a wider board, you're going to have to run it through two times. Very rarely do I ever do that. I almost never run anything wider than maybe 13 or 14 inches, maybe 15 inches. Uh, but I have run wider boards through, and basically you just run it through one side, flip it around, run it through the other. So here is the, the drum. And changing the paper isn't that difficult. It's, uh, I guess we can go ahead, I'll show you. I'll take this off and maybe we can do it in real time so you can get an idea. The, the one thing is the manufacturer of the paper, I think they make, the, they make it a little bit short. So you really kind of have to work it into the little clips here. But let's just go ahead and take the paper off and put it right back on because this is still a good piece of paper. I unplugged the machine, just always want to unplug a machine when you're doing anything with it. Uh, but anyway, uh, so there's a little clamp here and you can see that kind of loosens the paper. It's a little tricky. There we go. So if I was going to change the grit of the paper, I would carefully wrap this back up like I'm doing. As it comes off the drum, I just keep wrapping it. And then once I get the entire piece of paper off the drum, then I would just put a rubber band around it and uh, put it right back in the box that it came in. So now I'll press this clamp and pull the paper out. So the main thing is when you go to put your paper back in, you don't want to, you don't want to go too deep or you will run out of paper by the time you get to the other side. So it's a little bit of a, a kind of a trial and error thing. You get a feel for it. See what I'm doing here? I'm gonna kind of recrease this so I can get it to go through that clamp. See what I mean? It's a little bit difficult. Okay, there. that just caught it. Now I'm kind of straightening it out. And now I'm going to just move the drum and keep tension on the paper. I'm just working my way towards the other side. 
making sure that I don't overlap the paper or have too, you know, that it's just nice and tight, just like that. This paper is pre-cut and I always buy the paper pre-cut and ready to wrap like this. So now I'm at this clamp here and this can be a little tri tricky when you, how does that work? So it would be helpful if this paper was just a little bit longer so you could feed it through that clamp. This is where it gets kind of difficult to, to squeeze it into that clamp there. Okay, I think I got it now. Okay. As that clamps in, there's a spring that pulls it down and that puts tension on the paper. Okay, now I've got the paper on, we're plugged back in. This button controls the drum. This dial controls, oh, that sounded pretty bad. But that's because it was scraping against the, the lid here. So this controls the conveyor belt. And this is the drum. This sand smart dial is an indicator if you're trying to take off too much material. So if you're trying to go too fast, you can either turn the dial down, maybe that will help, or you may have to raise the drum because you're trying to take off too much in one pass. This does have a tape measure on the side of it, and the thickest board that you can sand on this machine is three inches. For the most part, I'm not sanding anything thicker than eight quarter, which is usually uh, right around uh, an inch and seven eighths. You do need dust collection to have a gate that goes right to this sander. And the way I use this, I never pay attention to the, the tape measure on the side of the machine here. Basically, I know how thick the material is, whether it's three quarter, seven eighths, or an inch, whatever. I will raise the drum and start the conveyor and then just have the board go through. And as it's going through, I slowly, yeah, that's the right direction. I slowly lower the drum until it just kisses the material. Because the worst thing you can do is try to take off too much material. It's not good for the machine for one thing, and two, it's going to ruin your sandpaper. That's what's going to make your, your sandpaper burn up. The other thing with this, with I think maybe any drum sanders, I avoid using soft woods like Douglas fir or pine. I don't use pine ever anyway because I have an allergy to it. But I have some Douglas fir that I was working with recently and I don't like to put Douglas fir through this machine because the sap in it will gum up the paper. Here's a piece of cherry and you can see the rough spots right here. So we'll go ahead and put this through the sander and I'll probably have to run it through about three times before these are gone. I've got the drum raised and you can see that the board will fit right underneath. Now I'll go ahead and turn the sander on, turn the conveyor belt on very slow. And now I'm going to lower the drum until I hear it hit. That's it. Maybe a little bit more. Now I can turn up the speed. Now that I've established the height of the drum, I'm going to run this board through again because the front of this board wasn't sanded. Now let's say that I've got six other boards that are going to be part of this project and they all need to be sanded to the same thickness. Once this board goes through, that's the first run, then I'll run those other boards through. Then I'm going to bring the drum sander down like a quarter of a turn depending on the wood species how wide the board is, how narrow the board is, and run all the boards through again until they're all sanded. I'm lowering this a quarter of a turn. Again, turn it on. Forgot the dust collection.
Okay, that rough spot is just about sanded away. Let's run it through one more time and take another look. Quarter turn. Okay, so like I said, I'm pretty happy with this machine and for my small shop, it gets the job done. My friends over at Green Street Joinery, they just bought a Grizzly wide belt sander. So let's take a ride over there. We'll take a closer look at that machine and you can decide what would be the best machine for your shop. Hey. Yo, what's up guys? Hey, not much. Got the whole crowd here. Oh, man. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Wow, that takes up a pretty small footprint. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I think it's it's basically just about a quarter of the size of the... We're over here at Green Street with Rob and Jeff. These guys just got a new tool, so let's go yeah. take a look at yeah, it. Yeah, we're happy. You like it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Good. Tell me all about it. Jeff's the guy who gets technical, so yeah, we'll let him so, take over. As Rob was just saying, we have the new Grizzly G0819. Uh, this is a 15 inch open-ended wide belt sander so you see it's it's open on this end um, so it has technically a 30 inch capacity you can run a piece through and flip it around this is replacing our 38 inch woodmaster double drum sander you can kind of see where it was it was you know basically four times the size of this machine it came all the way across here and this is where we had the the foot cut out but um It'll do the same sort of operation, just a little bit better and, and smaller to fit within, you know, the space of the shop. So, What's the difference between a wide belt sander and a drum sander? Uh, well, we'll open it up here. I can show you. So you see here with the wide belt sander, obviously it's using a belt like you would on a, on a belt sander. And it has three drums, two on the bottom and one on the top. And they're tensioned by by air so it has 70 psi going to it it tensions the belt when you want to change belts you just release that you can pull it off slide a new one on so this lets us change belts really quickly it has this uh, tracking here and the belt actually oscillates so aside from spinning this goes counterclockwise it, uh, it also oscillates back and forth so you don't get the sanding lines that you get from a, a drum sander changing belts is is faster with the drum sander, you have to wrap the paper around the drum. And it takes a lot of time, and because they're so rigid, you end up blowing the paper up a lot and ripping it. Um, so we spent a lot of time with the old sander changing out paper. With this, if something happens to this, you just pull it off, slide a new one on, you can retension it, and, and you're good to go. So we'll get a better surface finish, and it'll be more productive, we'll spend less time messing around with the paper, which you really, you don't want to be doing that. You just want to run your parts through and, and move on with your day. Now I noticed when you opened the door, there was no tension on the belt. Right. So when you're not using it, there's no tension on the belt? Yeah, we would, uh, we would normally, if we're not using it, we would even keep the air off. The air goes in down here with a little oil separator, or I guess a, a water separator rather. So it's in here regulated to 70 PSI. We would have the machine off, tension off and the air actually shut off. Um, then when you go to use it, you can turn on your air, turn on the machine, and uh, or tension it first and then turn on the machine. So a few steps before you just turn it on. Yeah, yeah. And so you said that this is a 1530, so theoretically you could do like 29 probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah it has this uh, little extension that pulls out. Oh nice, yeah, yeah. so it supports the material. Yep. We have it on a mobile base and we have extra long on the cord and the air that way um, and we have a different hose we can pull it out if we have to do really long pieces because we only have about uh, maybe 10 feet on either side. So if we ever have to do like a 16 foot piece we'll be able to pull it all the way out here into the shop and, and run some long pieces through. What kind of power you got going to this? So this is uh, on a 50 amp 220 circuit uh, by itself and it's a, like a three blade. 50 amp plug. They recommend hard wiring this with a shutoff box, but this is essentially the same thing. This way, again, if we need to pull it out, we can pull it out. 
How much did it cost? This was $6,400. Oh, so it's pretty expensive. Yeah. Um, cheap in terms of wide belt sanders. Sure. But exp definitely an expensive tool. Um, probably the most expensive tool in the shop. Yeah. Yeah. More than the saw stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so the main use for this and why we're not really concerned about only having 15 inches here. So we obviously we joint our, our wood, we plane it. And then we want to run it through this to take out any of that chatter from the planer. Even with a helical head, you know, you can see and feel a little bit of chatter and a little bit of snipe. So we can run everything through this and um, they're like really close to finishing level. What paper are, will you be using for the most part? We have a hundred on here. We'll probably maybe keep it at a hundred, 120. We sand to 120 with the vesting finish. So um, you don't have to go much higher than that. That's nice, and I just looked at the piece you finished with mm -hmm. the vesting uh, UV light. Is that what it is? The LED, yeah, LED. LED. Yeah, that's nice. That's all sanded to just 120. That's amazing. And it's like, you know, it's like glass. So this is a, like a rubber type belt, similar to what we had on the Woodmaster. Um, I think it's on a, a one horsepower. The motor for this is separate. So uh, let's see, twist that, and that controls the belt. So they're on two separate switches and, and motors. That's moving pretty fast, I think. This, I think it'll run at three different speeds. Um, it's not like a quick change. You have to do something on the inside. 16, 32, maybe 16, 24, 32 feet per minute. It has like a amp meter here, and it could tell you how much load you're putting on it. Like if you're taking too big of a bite and you get into this 28 to 30, you know, you're, you're overloading the machine. How much are the belts? I think they're about $20 a piece. And there's actually, they're pretty widely available. It's a 16 by 48 belt. And Grizzly sells them directly. I saw uh, Maverick abrasive, Abrasives have them, Merca sells them. So you can get them at a couple, couple different places. Yeah, so we got this Monday. Today is Thursday. We obviously, we haven't um, used it a whole lot. We've run some test pieces through. I mean, I think so far, we're very impressed with it. It'll, it'll definitely do what we need it to do. I mean, we'll see in the long run how, how it works out, but first impressions are, um, it's basically exactly what we needed. And what made you choose a Grizzly? There's only two real sanders this size that I saw, um, was the Powermatic and the Grizzly. The Powermatic is essentially, you know, the same machine as you see with, with most of the other woodworking machines. They're very similar. Maybe the Powermatic has slightly better build quality and some, you know, maybe some of the parts and stuff, um, but it's a couple thousand more. And um, we have some other Grizzly machines that we're happy with, so we figured, you know, it's gonna be, gonna be perfect. So we'll go through sort of the procedure. We already tensioned the belt. Um, you need to set the height. Now this is already set to this thickness because we already ran this board through, but uh, has a graduated gauge on the side. You can measure with calipers, so we have a uh, inch and a sixteenth plus a sixty-fourth. I'm not gonna break that. Five sixty-fourths, I guess that would be. Uh, maybe not. Um, so over here we have it. It's set to that. Another way you could do it is you could actually lower the table and you can start running this through and you can bring it up until you hear it start to sand a little bit. Um, that's the way we used to do it on the drum sander for the first pass because you know, these, uh, these little markings can be a little tricky sometimes. Sometimes you think you're setting it to the right thing and, and you're not, you don't want to break the belt. So uh, I guess we'll go ahead. You, you always twist this, turn on the conveyor. standing until back here because we were bringing the table up so we're going to back here.
we haven't, you know, we haven't gotten a feel for the machine yet. So I was doing a, a full turn there. That may be a little heavy depending on the wood and the grit. Maple's pretty hard. This is 100 grit, which is pretty coarse. So, um, you know, as we start to use the machine and use it with different widths and different materials, we'll figure out, you know, is it, is it a full turn that we want to do? Do we want to do half turns, quarter turns? And we're actually, we have one on the way. We're going to add a digital readout, see how that works. We've uh, used them before with limited success, but we'll give it a try on this machine and see um, if that sort of helps with what we're trying to do. And what's the uh, thickness capacity on this machine? This will sand uh, up to six inches, and I think the minimum is five sixteenths or maybe three, three sixteenths. Well, listen, guys, thanks, and uh, good luck with the machine. It looks good. Thanks. Yeah, we're looking forward to using it. Want to say you, anything? John. Hey, good seeing you as always. Yeah, you know me. I like to stay in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see ya. Okay, well, as you can see, the guys over at Green Street Joinery are using their sander pretty much the same way I'm using mine, except their sander is going to sand the wood a little bit nicer and a little bit faster, but also at a much higher price tag. My suggestion is if you've got a small shop like mine or you're just getting into woodworking, go with the smaller machine. If it turns out that the smaller machine can't keep up with your production, well then that justifies the higher price tag of the, the wide belt sander. So I hope you found this video helpful and thanks for tuning in.